thank you for taking some time today. Um, so the first question is 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 really talk to me about. Uh, I know you guys were planning, uh, Vastoom was planning actually to come up to Seattle as part of a run, but when, when COVID went down, how did that impact you as a, as a band, but then also maybe as an individual, you can go off in any way you want to. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so Vastoom were supposed to do just like three shows up north, uh, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver in mid-March, and um, everything hit the fan probably like that week or earlier that week or maybe yeah. less than a week before we were supposed to go. So, um, you know, for like that whole week before we were supposed to fly up to Portland, it was like, well, do we go? Do we not go? Should we cancel now? Should we? So we kind of held out as long as we, we could. And then it was like, I don't know, I think it might have been even longer than a week before we were supposed to go that we were thinking of canceling. And then and then the promoters just, you know, had to cancel. I think at that point it was like Oregon and Washington had that like no crowd rule of like right. 250 people. And we're like, well, at that can we all stand six feet apart? How are we going to make this work? <laughs> Do we wear <laughs> inner tubes at the show? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, and anyone that's ever been to a Vastum show knows that, you know, social distancing and Vastum don't really... Well, I'm trying to picture out how Danny... I'm trying to picture out, how's Danny going to do this? Because <laughs> I can just see him coming into the crowd and, wait, I can't! I can't do that at this show. Part crowding. And exactly. Kind of a Moses parting the Red Seas moment. Um, uh, has it... Um, I, I know for a lot of bands, and one of the reasons why I'm doing that, a lot of bands printed up a boatload of merch, et cetera, before shows... Um, I am, I am sure that's the way with you guys. Um, is there a place that, that, uh, folks can go to, cause this is a tough time, you know, is there a place that folks can go to, you know, to help support and make sure that, uh, you as musicians get through and we're, we're trying to help as many as we can. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Um, thanks. You know, uh, so unfortunately the merch that we were going to sell up North, um, is sitting in a box somewhere in Portland and it's just going to stay there. I think right. maybe until we get to reschedule, I don't know, we might have to revisit that at some point, but, um, and unfortunately our store envy shop is temporarily closed okay. um, because uh, our drummer, Chad Gailey, um, was pretty much managing that whole, that, that store and, He's down in San Jose. Uh, it's about an hour from Oakland. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if he just can't get to the stuff, so he hasn't been able to do it. So that's why it's closed now. Um, but yeah, so sadly, we don't have any merch for sale at the moment. Um, but people can go to, I think Bandcamp's really the best way to support uh, us or, you know, any yeah. of my other projects, you know, you can opt to pay more if you want. Um, I just put out a new solo single that you could just pay what you want. It's free or you can pay something if you want. Let's, let's talk about that for a little bit. How, how recent is this, um, piece that you put out? Oh, when well, it, you... it was sort of an off the cuff remix uh track from one of the um diminution tracks oh yes and it was like you know so total spur of the moment thing Bandcamp was doing um like one 24 that hour friday or something yeah they were uh waiving all their commission fees and giving it to uh you know letting the artists collect 100 percent of their sales and I was like, well, why not? I've been sitting on this remix thing. I was going to use it for a compilation, and then I thought, well, you know, why don't I uh, just put it out? Because I don't know. Yeah. If, who knows when the next comp compilation thing will uh, come around, and who knows where labels are at these days? And yeah, so. Absolutely. That's great. So that's so that's I'll make sure to put that as a tag at, in the bottom of the video. That's fantastic. Um, talking about your solo work. One of the things I think I've noticed a lot of people are picking up on, and I'm going to use an old term that's kind of late 70s noise pollution, um, which I still love as, as a term, but we're living through this strange pause in many things, 
right now. And, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I've noticed being, and, and I'm bringing this up because some of the found sound material that has worked its way into uh, your musical work. Um, I'm finding that when I go outside with the decrease in uh, kind of uh, human made noise, I, I'm noticing things at a different level now. The, the frogs that are, there's a pond probably uh, 200 yards from my house. I went out and recorded them yesterday just because I had never been able to hear just the frogs that loud in a really long time. So I'm just wondering, as somebody who borrows from the, I'll loosely call it the natural world and the kind of ambient soundscapes that are around us all the time, how are you in, how are you kind of tuning into what we this strange ambient just shift that we've got going on now and i'll just open up you know just go if you want to that's really interesting um you know unfortunately i live in downtown oakland where there's really not much uh natural sound happening um i'll hear like seagulls every now and then yeah uh, we, we live uh, pretty close to Lake Merritt, so there's some there's some cool birds around there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, so uh, actually, you know, the the found natural sound thing um, has been there's been such a shortage of it for me, and it's it's really kind of been wearing on me. I, I mm -hmm. have access uh, to you know I don't I don't have a car. Um, they're they're not uh, rental places that are that close by. So I haven't been able to just go to remote places and record right. stuff, you know, like I love to do. And um, so that's been kind of like, you know, I've been kind of hungry for that, but mm. um, you know, I guess I just have to work harder and be more creative, no. you know, <laughs> no, no, you don't have, no, you don't have to, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, send you uh, <laughs> lossless uh, frog files of hours of just <laughs> droning frogs in a, in a pond and you, there, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. The last few summers, I, I have had quite a few frog recordings. Um, my parents live in New Jersey. That's where I grew up actually. Um, and they've been renting a beach house, um, down by the Jersey shore and, oh. uh, and the, in the summer, um, the sound of the frogs and the crickets and whatever insects are just mind blowingly like just orchestral and um, yes, yes, and so rich and the amount of percussive elements that are going on, it's incredible. Yeah, so like East Coast summers, I'm sure you remember those pretty well. Yeah, um, are just magical when it comes to like the night. Um, insect sound and soundscape and um, you know the humidity and the smells and the they're and not then, fireflies <laughs> so. yeah well yes I, I recall fireflies a lot from Maine where we lived and, and then also when we lived in Wisconsin there was a lot there for a while and you would get this visual that a field of fireflies is visually um, mind-blowing yeah so we're, we're all finding ourselves uh, trying to make sure that we hold on to our sanity as we're in the midst of this very difficult situation. Um, are there particular uh, activities or um, maybe movies or, or books that, uh, or even topics that you have found yourself kind of gravitating towards as a way to uh, manage this insane time? Um, yeah, well, it's funny, over Christmas, uh, Christmas, over Easter weekend, uh, my partner Nathan and I um, uh, watched uh, um, Tem Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And I had seen that movie once before, like maybe 20 years ago, and I gotta say it's really held up over time. Mm. Um, you know, it's kind of different for a Scorsese film. Uh, it's got a little bit of his touch, his, you know, kind of New York humor in there. Yeah. A little bit. Um, but yeah, Willem Dafoe. And yeah, I know. That's one of his best performances <laughs> ever. It's mind blowing. Yeah. So uh, super intense and violent. And, mm. um, I, 
I've been kind of gravitating towards that, which isn't really my norm. Um, hmm. Like I finally got around to watching Game of Thrones, which I know I'm like 10 years late to the whole ordeal, but right. um, that's been really satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Just it makes you feel something like, I don't know, the intensity and you know, humans in these really dire situations. And There's, uh, there's, there's the one scene, I'm going to forget the characters, just my graybeard mind forgets things from time to time. Uh, but, but the scene where the uh, individual skull is crushed uh, and the visceral reaction and the Velcro-like stickiness with which that, I mean, it, it was palpably one of the most intense scenes I have seen in, in a very long time. Yeah. Um, and you're right, it had this ability to just be so intense, but but not kind of, it, it's an, it's a good show. It's a, it's cool that you're getting to it kind of after the hype. I did that with Lost, right? I was not somebody who watched Lost when it was out and big and, and I watched it later and it kind of allowed me to make sense of it in my own way without, so I think it's actually a good way to watch sometimes is, is years later. Yeah. Um, and, and something, you know, when series are really long like that and they're like eight seasons of something, it's like, I haven't had time to sit down and watch stuff like binge watch the whole thing until now pretty much so um you know which i guess is good and bad because i haven't really uh been working on as much music as i mm. had been um and that's just you know um except for the electronic projects which i can still do from home really easily that's the way i've been doing it for a long time but yeah the metal stuff and um you know i also have another new band that just got off the ground and Tell yeah. us a little bit about that if you'd like to. I'd be interested to hear about that. That would be great. Yeah, I feel bad because I don't have anything uh, to show for it right now. But um, Terabellum is a new band with um, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Hunt Hutton from Hammers and Misfortune mm -hmm. uh, and Sam Foster. Uh, we were in a band called Sorrows uh, mm -hmm. many years ago. Uh, fantastic drummer. Um, and then my partner, Nate Barrel, who's in Cardinal Worm. And... We do uh, a project called Fear Two together. So, um, so yeah, we're the four of us are Terabellum, and it's sort of a kind of a post-punk ethereal oh. like, death rock kind of thing. Yeah, I'd I'd love to hear your take on that style of uh, of music. You know, that that's one of the things that I've always kind of not kind of completely dug about. Uh, let's say Vastum, right? Was was the ability to bring in an experimental element, um, uh, you know, just, you know, the beginning of songs that have, you know, ambient noises that, or, or chant, the, the range of vocal styles that you as an individual are capable of. When I heard, like I said, when I heard Cold and Cloud um, and a lot of the solo work, uh, to me, and I, there's an element almost of um, this mortal coil uh, with, with, with the use of your voice as both a lyrical um, uh, mechanism, but also just a purely instrumental mechanism from time to time. Um, and so, like I said, for years, I was like, oh, my God, this is the new Liz Frazier. What is going on? This is incredible stuff. And then I heard Vastum and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, and, and so talk about I mean, how, just from a practice and technique standpoint, I'm, I'm blown away by your ability to hit all of that stuff. So, I mean, how much time have you had to dedicate over the years to working on having that diverse a vocal style? Well, uh, funny enough, um, I uh, haven't been doing vocals as long as I've been playing guitar. And for the longest time, um, I was kind of afraid of singing. And it was only probably when I um, formed Sorrows in 2003 that I started to come out of my shell um, doing vocals. Um, and uh, so there's sort of like, the um, sort of the metal path that I took yep. um, for 20 years now. And then, um, but, you know, going back to like the death rock stuff and the ambient stuff, mm -hmm. and, you know, industrial, the weirder kind of, you know, um, atmospheric stuff. 
I was in all that stuff first, you know, yeah. like, like, you know, from the age of 14, I was listening to like Rod and Gristle and absolutely sure, and Cocteau Twins and, um, all that stuff. Yes. Um, and, um, and seeing many of those bands live at the time, which was pretty amazing. Uh, and so, so all that stuff is really like in my DNA. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Long. And then, um, and then the metal, you know, and then I, I love metal too. I was listening to like lots of earache stuff, you know, Godflesh was kind of like my gateway into a lot of the more underground metal stuff. Um, street, street cleaner. I've been actually going back and listening to street cleaner, uh, recently. And it really, st I mean, that album was so uh, eye-opening for me as a, at the time a musician, but also mainly as a consumer of music. Um, so that's interesting to hear that that, that slips into a lot of people and it kind of slips under uh, the radar a little bit, but God damn, that was such a powerful album when it came out. Totally. And like, I, I would say even with Vastum, like Dan and I are, are the, the vocalists, lyricists. He, he definitely comes from a lot of that sensibility as well. Mm. Um, like, you know, he, he surprised me one day. I, w I went to a Diamond Galas concert and there he was. <laughs> I was like, huh. oh, I didn't know you were into her. Like, right. So, uh, so I think we kind of share some of those, uh, you know, weirder, darker um, tendencies, um, atmospheric, kind of death rocky um, uh, um, influences. So, yeah. I mean, the, the material as as a as a fun uh, partly as a function of that becomes much more enveloping than just um, uh, the song uh, kind of minus the uh, additional ambient elements and then also the layering of voices is sometimes to me as a listener it's are these different parts of the same ego talking to themselves about the topic that's in line. There's a lot of different ways. And I know that psychoanalysis actually uh, is something that uh, at least I read. You can read anything on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, but that has been an influence to some degree on your approach to lyrics. And I, I, I wonder if that's, um, I, I, I'm wondering how much that was actually the case or if it was, you know, it, how much does that creep into your work? Oh, uh, well, for Vastum, it absolutely does. Um, Dan's a psychoanalytic psychotherapist, so yeah. uh, he's getting his PhD um, in interdisciplinary, I don't know, it's kind of like history, and, um, uh, psychoanalysis, philosophy. I'm not even sure what all the things are. He's going to uh, be the next Michel Foucault. Anthropology, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That kind yeah. of thing. And so, um, you know, so he's... And then I work, um, I'm the one of two office admin at the Psychoanalytic Institute of Northern California. So I have access to all kinds of uh, stuff to read on it. And um, so uh, I would say his lyrics are more, a little more along the psychoanalytic thread than mine are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a little more on the intellectual side, not completely, but. Um, so yeah, I would say with that stuff, it does more, I think with my other work, especially my solo work and then, uh, my electronic trio, Iona four, um, I do all the vocals for that as well yeah. is, um, way more stream of consciousness. And, you know, so, some of the stuff that I, you know, some of the lyrics I write and record, I don't even know what they're going to be till I hit record and, hmm. and the, you know, the background music's going and I, I, I just hit go and throw paint wow. and see what happens and then I shape it from there it's that's just that's what I like to do it's it yeah. feels really free and spontaneous and yeah there's an improvisational element to the that's wonderful yeah and then live um like right before uh, oh. all the corona stuff hit the fan uh uh Vastum flew out to Maryland to play Shadow Frost Fest um oh. and um and then I did a solo set uh, with with Nate and Ryan, uh, who the three of us play, you know, we play live, um, uh, you know, my solo material. So um, that is really improvisational, mm -hmm. like 
just make up lyrics on on stage on the spot. Um, and I and I'm it's sort of addictive. It's like uh, it's like once I started doing it that way and I and I got more comfortable doing it. That's the only way I like to do it now. I mean, there's hmm. some written elements of it too, but but I try to keep at least half of the set improv. Oh. Do, do you have themes or is it literally just like you said stream of consciousness and and or, and you ride it so is there an is there kind of a subtext there going on or is it just like scat singing in some ways some of it's kind of spiritual um not in the religious sense but yeah. uh, sort of in the you know occult magic sense of it um so uh and then and then the stuff that i write um, definitely has different themes, uh, insomnia, cold and cloud, cold and cloud is more personal. That was my first album. Right. Yeah. Which is super cool that you, you know, cause that, out of the, my three albums, that was the one that was sort of like, um, the least people know about more people know about diminution. Right. Insomnia. That's super awesome. That you, you it's a, it's this old hippie guy in in central Maine had it for this college radio station and and he would play it and, and I would just be like I I may have been the only one who was listening to it. it was like two in the morning and it was like God damn this is good you know um so it is funny that that's the one that kind of made it all the way to central Maine <laughs> totally and that that's a pretty personal album um, although the found sounds on that album were from my parents' backyard in New Jersey. Um, wow. So there are crickets and um, I don't know, all kinds of night bugs on, yeah. I think June 14 is the song that, that right. has. So um, so I just still perform material from that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and basically that album is just about being so emotionally devastated that you can't even, you can just barely function. It was just, written in um, almost a complete state of despair. Mm. So, uh, so from there, I kind of, you know, got a little less self-indulgent, <laughs> right. moved on right. to, um, you know, like diminution is more thematically, you know, on the macro level. Uh, and just, I'd, I'd like you to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Be because, because I know that in some ways diminution in it, is about in some ways struggling to find your place in today's world. And in particular, I, I think the role of the artist in the, the world that we live in. So, so if you could talk about that, I'd be honored to kind of hear your take on that. And then maybe also how even this extreme situation that we're in now feed, feeds back onto that question as well. You know, it's so funny. I feel like I write about stuff uh, too early. <laughs> like, you know, that, that album would have had a totally different meaning if it came out now than it did two years ago. Yeah. And really at the time it was like the sense of, uh, you know, uh, creative, uh, deterioration and giving way to, um, you know, the, I don't know, like mass produced ways of consuming art, um, sort of like the, the consumer platforms have taken over and are more valued than the creative process. And so that's really what that was getting into. Um, and, and there were some, you know, personal flourishes mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, the, the personal uh, experience of uh, watching a family member die. Uh, so that's life leaving. Um, so that's, you know, the art was very inspired by that experience as well. Gotcha. And, um, but we're like, yeah, so yeah, I feel like um, sometimes I write lyrics about things that, or my bandmates do and, um, or write song titles that, for things that kind of like happen later, like right. before um, we had a song on our first album. Now we're going back like eight years mm -hmm. when we wrote that album called Corona Viride. Oh so, no. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we found patient zero in that song. Oh, right. right. <laughs> so so I guess it's, it's sort of this unconscious. I, I almost like 
it's like, well, I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't know this was going to happen eight years later, but at, at the same time, it's like, well, maybe sort of unconsciously I did. <laughs> Well, I, I think in some ways, at a, or at a subconscious level, we're dealing with, uh, well, at least a lot of psychoanalysts would say we're dealing with that issue of death constantly. And so it's um, it's always there. Last question that I have for you, I, um, and that is moonshine right there, folks. That is straight moonshine. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one thing... Um, and, and it can be an indulgence or it could be something uh, grandiose, but, but what's the one thing that you're really looking forward to at the other side of this um, shared experience that we're all going through right now? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think I'm worried that it'll never go back to normal, not for a really long time. So things will reopen, but not in the same way. So the things that I am looking forward to mostly, which is uh, performing live, fun, fun, and uh, you know, being in the same room with my bandmates and the guitar again, and singing to a mic again. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen once you know, things are back open, like this weird, you know, everybody standing like. <laughs> Well, have do you remember those old inflatable sumo suits? Right. So we'll all you can just I can I can picture just and even then we're probably still too close if we all wear those. Right. Like how are shows going to be? <sighs> so it's like things are going to open back up, like you know, maybe restaurants and schools and offices and stuff like that. But are they going to really be able to put on like a show with like three to five hundred people? And, and the scary, but not not scary. Well, yeah, scary thing. The scary thing is that some places are going to start opening up real soon uh, in parts of this country, and and I think we're going to learn a lot, unfortunately, by trial and error with human lives. Yeah. And and, and that. Um, That's God, I, I was trying to end on a positive note. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, um, I'm, yeah, another thing I'm looking forward to is seeing my family who are all on the East Coast and, um, yeah, being able to fly cross country again, which, you know, um, hopefully I get to do by the holidays, but probably. Yeah, not. I hear you. I mean, on, on a personal note, my uh, my folks are back out East, too, and they're in Massachusetts, and it's starting to really spike there, and I'm... It's, you know. My sister's in Massachusetts, actually, uh, in, uh, in Western Mass, and she's a social worker and can't work from home. She works in a nursing home. Yeah. Oh. Someone there has coronavirus and probably something. Keep in touch with her and make sure she's all right. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I wish her the best. Um, I, I wished you and and um, your partner and all of the the kind of community and network of musicians uh, that you're connected with the best. Um, uh, you know, I want you to to be safe. I, I want to thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank um, you. Thanks for all your awesome photo work too. I, I haven't oh. really wanted to publicly um, <laughs> thank you for that. And, uh, we need to hook you up with a record because uh, it's. <laughs> Thanks so much. And, well, yeah, you and your family. Hope hope you guys um, stay safe. And... We'll bang heads again. We'll see each other again. Awesome. I I may look like Gandalf at that point, but we'll see each other again. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Have a good Have a good day. All right. You too. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye.